Welcome to organizing a 698 square foot single wide manufactured home. We are working on the office, laundry room, bathroom, and bedroom. Yes, you're actually going to see the sleeping closet. We are not going to waste any time. In fact, we are going to jump right in. What you're seeing here is the opening to the office. It's just past that pantry. Behind us is this wall right here. It is my, I'm a permaculturist, so it is my total design of the food forest that we live on, the land that we live on. I'm not going to go into detail with that, quite honestly. It's probably boring for most of you, but there will be more videos in the YouTube channel that you can watch. Um, skip them if you're not interested in them. But for right now, we are going to move right into the office. This room is seven feet by nine feet, so it is really tiny, and it's going to be very hard for me to film this. But like I said in the part one of this, when we were looking at the kitchen the and the pantry, that pantry is was actually the closet for this room that we had them put the door into the office lawn into the hall. So here we're looking up. I put alpha shelving. This is going to be the walnut colored solid alpha shelving all the way up. You see a shelf at the very top of the door um, that holds all of my Cricut um, vinyl and heat transfer stuff. Everything is organized in a binder or a container of some sort. This desk that you see here, actually the container store helped me design it. Um, there is the shelf that holds the keyboard and then there's another shelf that you see above it that's eight inches wide um, that goes along the width of the desk and it actually holds the monitor. Now notice the monitor's held up above and the keyboard slides underneath it. There's actually everything, the stapler and the tape measure slides underneath it, the tape um, dispenser. I'm actually in the middle of working on work some some shirts that I do with the Cricut. You see the Cricut to the left right there on the table. We'll go back to that. Um, everything has an actual place. Um, the binders are all lined up. Those hold all of our manuals and all of our paint chips and anything that we would need or that we used for designing this land. You see all of the books that I've written that are on the top shelf, our batteries, our ink storage. Now, mind you, I don't go shopping whenever I run out of something. I go shopping once a year and take inventory of everything that we have. Now you see me, I'm actually closing the door. The alpha shelving um, bracket goes all the way across and you see the ironing board hanging up. They have hooks for everything. So I actually redesigned designed the shelving so that it would work for us specifically. This right here was an addition. It fits right between the two standards. It holds a whole bunch of pegs. It was a new system that they brought out. It's amazing. It also has little storage containers that you see right there. Those are our battery backups and they are stored in little containers in order of when they were last charged. Last goes in the back, first goes in the front. Um, so when we need to grab a battery, we know exactly which one we're grabbing. The, the shelving just is am amazing. So you can redesign it however you want. You will actually see it a lot in the back. So now we are going to the back door. Remember in the pantry in the first video, you saw the alpha rack for the back door. You actually see my vinyl storage at the very top. That shelf is actually just a sheet of plywood that I cut out. Now that rack holds all of our electronics, old phones, um, wires, anything that we would need, um, all neatly organized. Some of it is falling out. Um, I'll have to fix it. Now this right here is Billy bookcases and the Billy bookcases line the whole entire three walls of this um, seven by nine area. So it really cuts it to about four feet by six with this. Behind there, I put my cutting mat. Um, I do a lot of sewing and that mat needs to hold um, flat. So it nestles in between the back of that bookcase and it fits perfectly. I also hold a lot of my cardboard that I need when I'm sending things out that need to lay flat. Those are two shelves that are sitting to the um, left that are extras. This is actually, the first cabinet is actually 
the office supply cabinet. It holds every office supply that I would need, extra paper and books and everything, nice and neatly organized by um, what I would want. The top um, cabinet holds the extra CDs and DVDs. Um, and then I have boxes up at the top. Those actually hold memorable items that I just can't bear to, to part with. Um, which is not very many. You see the sewing machines up to the right. All of these I painted. They're just glass. I painted with chalkboard paint. I write my prayers on them. They are literally all books, people. Books. My husband is a lover of books. That basket that's on the floor is actually homeless. It has no place to live, so it's just full of the stuff. And we get to move it every time we need to open a door. It's not ideal. Now, inside the doors, I've put little tiny stick hooks. that, And I took um, pant hangers. And that is how I store my already used vinyl, heat transfer vinyl, and HTV, and 651. Everything is stored by likeness. Um, and... Then you see the other one, the long five foot sheets get stored in that too. So that's what it looks like when it's all closed. Up at the very top, you see there's more stuff up at the top. An old collection of Snoopy books I just can't seem to part with for some reason. And then these clear bins that are stacked on top of each other, those hold my 12 by 12 paper. And then we have baskets that are up at the top. Those are, those are documents that, you know, we just don't want to part with, but we needed a place to put them. Now, you see I have my printer on top of some old um, suitcases, leather suitcases. Those I actually got out of a dumpster. And this, the Cricut is sitting on a um, table that I made from old used pallets, and it actually has some drawers. We'll take a better look at that. But as you move up, you'll see little pegboards that are just hanging there. Those hold all of my tools. I use these tools weekly. Um, and I, putting them in a drawer and throwing them around where I have to hunt for them, not ideal at all. So this way, they're very easy. You see my very first Chrissy, my cat, um, and things I like and things that I'm also going to test. So you have that there. This is that table. That table is just made out of ripped down one by fours, which are pallet wood. Um, I hold all, um, not all, a lot of my paper, the heat press for the Cricut. Every, it was actually designed for the Cricut. And then it has a slide out table um, that comes with it. So next to there, you see another clear plastic 12 by 12. Again, it's it's actually 651 vinyl. Um, then you see my pen storage. I actually have a video of making that on my crafting channel. I taught myself how to cut glass. You can learn anything off of Google. Just saying. Now we're going to the drawer. I told you there was a shelf that came out on this cabinet that I built for the Cricut. It holds all of my mats, which also need to lay flat. It pulls in and out where I can use it to um, to cut on or to store st things on, and then it just slides out and slides in. I love that. Now we move, move over and we look at this Cricut, at this uh, Cricut pen organizer. The pens are held upside down. It's got a handle on it. It's actually really cool. They're all color coordinated and they're easy for me to reach because I do a lot of Cricut products in this office. It, it, is a lot. And when I need to use the scanner that's on top of the printer, I have to move one thing. I don't have to move a whole bunch of pens. Now we can move to the laundry room. I think it has equally enough stuff in it, if not more. This laundry room holds one year supply of cleaning products. One year. It also holds all of the comforters up at the very top, a year supply of Kleenex. Um, it I mean, everything that you could possibly use in a laundry room or for cleaning a house is here. Trust me. Um, there's baskets. There's organizing racks. It's also alpha shelving again, and it is amazing. I put Cricut vinyl on my washing machine. I actually have a crafting video on that on the crafting channel. Now we're going to look up at the top here of these hooks. Those are curtain tie back hooks on the left that the oh, um, coat hangers are hanging on. I just nailed them right. Instead of putting them to hold tie back your curtains, I just screwed them straight into the wall. They hold um, clothes hangers on one side and pant hangers on the other. And then on this is on the left of the laundry area and on the right of the laundry area 
area is where all of the socks go when they don't have a match. Um, any change or anything goes in that little cup. You see it says bullets. That's just because sometimes I find shell casings. Um, it's just part of my life. So that I made out of the Cricut and just a blank piece of wood and some clothespins. It was quite easy. To the left of the washing machine, you'll see a wooden clothes drying rack that actually pulls out in and out quite easily. We use it all the time for drying clothes or things that we don't want to go into the into the dryer. Um, there is actually another clothes drying rack that I have attached between the back door, the top of the back door, and the top of the pantry door, and you'll see here. So I can dry a whole entire load of laundry in this very small house if I need to. Let's go back to the containers. These metal containers that you see that are all labeled right here, they're actually DVD cases. At, um, organizing cases and I believe I got them from Target years ago. These are this cleaning product. There's actually two that um, are for cleaning. Well, they're, they're all cleaning or beauty products or molds. Um, I make a lot of my own um, moisturizers and shampoos and soaps and stuff like that. So um, all of these hold the products that I would need. It's it's very amazing the little amount of products that you would need to to make a multitude of cleaning products. Now that beeswax right there um, came from our own bees. I actually processed beeswax and purified it um, myself. You can learn anything off Google. So the next thing I want you to see is that wooden thing on top of the washing machine and dryer. You would think that that was just for looks, but it actually is not. It actually serves a purpose. I do a lot of Cricut um, cutting and working and a lot of crafting, and I need flat surfaces. So because I need flat surfaces, I actually will use the top of my washing machine and dryer, but it has little divots and ridges on it. So I built this wooden structure um, so that I could put it on and off. It slides on, it slides back on. I can do the laundry, then I can put it back, and then I can put stuff on top of it to do my work. Now, Cricut has 12 by 12 paper and 12 by 24 paper, and this is where that comes in handy. When I am trying to intricately put a piece of 12 by 24 paper or longer, um, I need a flat, long surface. So this is great because it holds my mats that are not in use underneath of it when I'm working, and I can bring out a longer mat to use for... Um, there you see me putting a long mat underneath it. I'm grabbing the other one. So I can intermix and change and I can bring that cutting mat that we had that's stored behind that bookcase in the office. I can bring that out and I, I can literally cut. The lighting is okay. It's not preferable, but I literally have a great work surface to prep what I'm getting ready to cut and then I can take it in and run it through the Cricut. Just to the right of the dryer up a ways is a t shower tension, shower curtain rod. And it's just tension between the two walls. It's where I hang the work shirts when they just come out of the washing machine so they can dry. It's where I hang things that shouldn't go in the dryer so they can dry. Um, it's quite convenient for us. Now, because this is a small place and I need storage, I actually built a corner storage um, to hold the vacuum cleaner in the corner of this hall. It seemed like it was wasted space. Little did I know, I now pray that my washing machine and dryer don't break because in order to get them out, I'm either gonna have to take them through the bedroom window or I'm gonna have to disassemble this whole thing. It's actually just plywood that was put together and literally it was built in place. I took an old curtain from a uh, prior house bedroom, made a little tiny strap because it likes to hang out a little bit to hold the curtain in, and I just used eye hooks, um, little cup hooks to, to hold it. That uh, shelf down at the bottom, that is literally a shutter that was um, hinged on with two little hinges, and that holds the toilet cleaner and the dishwashing soap for a year or more, um, literally. There's also a um, tackle box that has a toolbox that has stuff in it that we use because um, I don't like to go out in the rain when it's raining, which is when I'm usually fixing stuff. 
And you've probably noticed there is no place for a broom or a vacuum cleaner in this house until I built this. So let's hope the washing machine lasts a long time. And there is alpha shelving even in this little tiny homemade corner closet. Those brackets hang um, up at the perfect height to snap in a broom. I tell you, they have products for everything. Then the vacuum cleaner bag um, containers are held up and just screwed into the side of this um, wall unit. And they um, everything has its place. All of the attachments are right there, up off the floor. Use the upper space of your home, people. That is where most of it is wasted. Then I put a uh, shelf at the very top that holds the vacuum cleaner bags. Um, and then you see the little curtain rod that is an Ikea curtain rod that goes across the top and it holds a sheer curtain that, that we made. Now you see this, um, we're back to where the other side of the laundry room where that tension rod is. And even above the bathroom door on the outside of the bathroom door, I put shelf brackets and just a piece of one by 12 pine that holds um, more stuff. Actually, it holds all the stuff for pedicures and boot making. This is my only wall of photos of really cute pictures that my mother had drawn for me days of the weeks and what we're supposed to do. Um, I don't really follow it, but I love the mice. They're just adorable. So they stayed. They made the cut of the video. So there's the above the door. One basket is empty. I have an empty basket. That is, um, I kind of keep it there just because I like empty spaces and that is my only empty space in this house. Let's just sit and enjoy the empty space. Now let's go to the Tinkletorium. My sweet niece is the one that named the bathroom the Tinkletorium, so I had to make a sign for it. So this is the entrance to our bathroom. I love it. Of course, you make a sign for it. And this bathroom holds everything you need for cleaning yourself and maintaining your hygiene for one year. Yes, you've heard that. This is actually one of the largest bathrooms I've ever lived in or ever lived house lived in. Um, you see our initials right there. Um, you see a, a cute, whimsical little candle chandelier. And then that shelving right there, again, I'm going to say it again, it's Alpha shelving and it's amazing. The baskets are from Michaels and Joann's, just a collection. I always wait for a 50% off sale. That um, storage containers made out of old one by fours of a structure that I took out of a garden. It holds and a lot of toilet paper, so we never have to worry about bringing toilet paper down in the rain. It's really not usable after it's been in the rain. It holds the glass jars um, that I use for making my products, my husband's um, shaving a foam that I make him. Um, and then it also holds the baking sodas and products and distilled water that we use when we are making our cleaning products. It's actually very functional and it was free because I used everything was reused from something. That's amazing. I love that. And then we moved to really the only storage space that came in the bathroom was under the sink. Now, because it's under the sink, everything in there is pretty much in Tupperware containers. Um, they have the big modular mates, and I had a bunch of those left over from a, a, an old pantry. Oh, I love that pantry that I had that stored a ton of stuff. And I took those and just store everything. It has our deodorants and our empty bottles that we use for soaps. I save deodorant containers that hold water, and I make my own lotions for feet. Um, and then I also use a marking system that you see on the side of my laundry detergent. Every time I open a container, I mark the date on it. And that is how I determine how many containers I need for the year when I go shopping in January for everything that we need. So it takes me about five, six months to use a bottle of laundry detergent. I know it's just the two of us. It probably takes longer now because I'm doing a little bit more laundry for my husband. But um, I, that's an amazing way of how to keep track of it. Now we're going to see the most amazing, cute little thing. This space was actually shelving and it had that wire rack shelving that they put in. We took it out and I hoisted in a Billy bookcase, which almost fit perfectly. I had to put a little um, spacers between it. Now the underneath of it was lifted up because we had cats and that's where the litter box went. We no longer sadly have the cats, so that is literally... Um, 
all of our sheets and your supply of hygiene. And then we have our shampoos and our conditioners, our lotions, um, the ones and candle products, my husband's stuff. But I think it's time for us to go to the sleeping closet. Now, yes, I did put a uh, the name of the sleeping closet on the front door. I think it's hilarious. The story behind it is my husband started getting more and more stuff in his closet. When you live in California, I'm just going to say it, you don't need to have 16 layers of clothing in your closet 10 months out of the year. So... I literally got pushed out of the closet. There's a little small closet. It's probably five feet long. My, my husband ended up taking up the whole thing, and I slowly started moving my clothes out. Well, then he started moving out of that closet. Literally, he was going crazy. Um, so I, oh, just wait till you see it. I literally went to back to the container store, told them what was going on. I designed the whole the whole system myself, and it is literally a closet. It is alpha shelving all across the top, as high up as I can get it. Um, it is all around the whole entire room. It is not ideal for me. I literally do not like this, but it is so functional. It's unbelievably functional. Straight ahead is where you see my clothes. Above, you see some of his boxes. <laughs> He's encroaching on my space even more. I have my shoe rack, which is right next to where I um, get ready in the morning. And then I have all those baskets up on top are my um, shorts and my summer clothes because we only need summer clothes really shortly. Here, you see a bench that's at the end of the bed. That is an old bench that I made quite a while ago. It's one of my first projects I ever made. And it opens up and it stores literally all of our um, linen. We actually don't get in here very much because I literally put my um, quilts that I hold very dear to me in there. And then to the left of the door immediately is Maggie's personal space. You see her going in there. That's where she feels comfortable. She loves that area. And we built it on, I put a, a, um, table on top of it for my husband to have all of his books in his nightstand basically. So his nightstand I turned into the dogs um, from a dog's kennel. And then this is his storage area. He likes to have his things on hooks so that when he comes home he gets undressed. He puts everything on a hook and then I'm doing laundry right now so he would put all of his, um, he would take all of his clothing that he would be, that he was on there off. And those are his baskets on top of that side of the room. Extra pillows when we have guests come over. I don't know where they sleep, but sometimes we have guests. Um, Everything really has a space. Socks are in one basket, t-shirts are in another basket, and right there behind that door, that is a full-length mirror that we can close, check and see if our clothes are on straight. Sometimes they're not. But here, right here, this is the most amazing part. My husband used to make me jewelry, and I love costume jewelry. Folks, costume jewelry. I'm not into the expensive stuff. Five bucks, ten bucks, and I'm out. This thing literally is pegboards, and I built it with one by twos and a pegboard sheet and heavy duty drawer pullers, you know, the sliding drawer pulls. And I put them sideways. Who says you have to use them the exact way that they were, that they're built for? So I have my costume earrings that are there, my bracelets, my anklets, my jewelry, and it's all organized. I love this thing so much. I haven't even painted it yet. It's been five years that since I made it and I, I just moved in and I figured I'll paint it later. So it literally looks just like that. That's the side view of it. It is probably, what, three inches total in width, maybe two. It slides out and it slides and locks in place. And it is amazing, folks. Literally amazing. So there I go sliding it back in. Now, the last wall we're going to see is the wall we look at when we are literally in bed every night. What woman want to, wouldn't want to look at all of her purses? I do have, or I did have a large one. I have a small collection of my favorite absolute purses that I keep, and this is what I look at every night. All of my purses in a nice, neat order. And there you go, folks. That is a sleeping closet. So there you go, folks. This is what it is like being organized in a 698-square-foot, single-wide, manufactured home. I know, it is such a pain. <laughs> but anyways, there is a reason why we have so much stuff and there is a reason why we live the way we do. And I think I'm going to 
gonna come back and I'm gonna do a video in just a few days of why we're like this and, and what it really is like. I showed you being organized, but I didn't really talk about what it was like. I mean, day to day, month by month, season by season, there's a lot to think about. And the idea of a small home is so nice and everybody's like, oh, that's so awesome. It must be so easy to clean. We need to sit down and talk. So grab your coffee because the next one, we are literally going to be having a heart to heart. Bye, you guys. Thanks for watching. Please don't judge how dirty my house was. We'll talk about that in part three. Bye.